Hey guys, Simon here, and today we are going to start an architectural tour of Portal. Uh, what should I say before we start? Maybe we should just jump straight into it, and maybe I'll talk more as we go in. So, uh, there's a developer commentary available, but I'm not going to do that here, although if you own the game, or if you want to buy the game, I highly recommend that you go through that, because of course the developers themselves talk about the game a little bit in that, and that's quite useful to understanding the game design and, and all that. Um, I guess I'm doing this now because... Actually, we'll, we'll sit through this. Just pay attention to what they show you and what they tell you. Right. It's a clock, by the way. They give you a minute. And then on, on the right-hand side here, you see WASD. So they're telling you the controls. Hello, and again, welcome to the Aperture Science Computer Aided Enrichment Center. We hope your brief detention in the relaxation vault has been a pleasant one. Your specimen has been processed, and we are now ready to begin the test proper. Before we start, however, keep in mind that although fun and learning are the primary goals of all enrichment center activities, serious injuries may occur. For your own safety and the safety of others, please refrain from... The portal will open in 3, 2, 1... Alright, so let's just... Can we shut this off? I'm not sure we can. No, we can't. Let's come over here. So let, let's just... Think about what we were just told there. We got, you know, welcome back. Uh, Aperture Science Enrichment Center, yeah, yeah. And then she went, uh, for your own safety, please do not touch, and then the audio gets glitched up. And then she says the portal will open in 3, 2, 1, and then the portal opens. So the welcome back on it, that, that's alright, but then she does convey some important information there, obviously, well, not, not so obviously, but at first, like the warning is a glitched up, even though nothing else is glitched up, so already that's introducing you to the story and introducing you to the character that's GLaDOS that she's, you know, omitting to tell you the warning and then calling this the portal, right, this thing so the fact that she says the portal will open in 3, 2, 1, and then this thing appears so then clearly she's talking about that, that's the portal uh, what else is here? We're in a glass room. We can see outside. And if you look, like if you play through the developer commentary, this is like they make a big point of this: the fact that when you're standing here, and usually you'd be, you know, looking around, you can see both portals on screen at once, and they're arranged so that you can see yourself. And this is fairly important. They describe how. Um, you know, it's important to show this to players because then they can immediately identify the fact that you're looking through the orange portal out of the blue portal and then at yourself. So this just here, that like, it tells you a lot. The fact that, you know, you're looking through the portal and you can see the orange portal on the other wall. You can see it yourself and that's clearly yourself because when you move, that character moves in the same way. So just the arrangement of the first two portals is very useful in describing to the player what's going on here. And the sound, as you go through, you can hear it. And the radio. I don't know if the stereo is good or not. Like, you can kind of get directional sound on the radio. And then you walk through, and that's there, and you can still see yourself and you know you can obviously recognize the furniture. You don't see this furniture anywhere else in the game. So it's very distinctive and they you know specifically included that in there so that you can recognize that it's the same room, right? There's no nothing else here. So I mean I, I keep going on and on about what seems to be really simple things, but the fact is like the game designers have spent the time and the care to design this in this way so that all of these things are communicated to the player very efficiently. And then there's the door. 
And I guess we should talk also about the visual language as well. You know, the fact that most of the walls are just white and fairly plain. I mean, there's a grid on it. The grid is also helpful, by the way, with the uh, portal placement and, and that sort of stuff. Like, you might not have noticed it as you play it. I'm assuming that most people have played this game by now. If you haven't, you probably should. But you know, the, the grid is quite useful for portal placement, for lining things up. Like, you might not have realized it when you played through it, but it helps a lot with that. And uh, the bright blue and the bright orange. So bright colors is one way to identify you know, the things that are important. And then there's this slightly worrying, slightly... You know, you're not, no, not sure what to make of this, the machinery behind the wall, so it's... It feels a little bit threatening in there, and then there's that, the glass office, you know, people are watching you and the cameras, someone's watching you, so... A lot's being communicated here, even though it might not be obvious. And then the door closes behind you. See, everything has a sound. Everything has a sound, and you can hear the doors opening and closing, you can hear that opening and dropping the cube and all that. So the tutorial says E to pick up an object. And I am not sure about... I guess they have to tell you about the, the keys. Excellent. Actually. Please proceed into the chamber lock after completing each test. First, however, note the incandescent particle field across the exit. This aperture science material prevents a patient grid will vaporize any unauthorized equipment that passes through it. For instance, the aperture science weighted storage cube. Right, so she's telling you about that. I was kind of rushing through this because I mean, I know how the game works already, but I mean, if we try to imagine what it's like for a new player coming in, again, colors are important. The bright red on this, if you step on it, it makes a sound, it changes in appearance, that changes color, the cross turns into a tech, the door opens. So there's all these sounds and colors and lines and things just to really tell you what's going on with the puzzle. And I say this, you know, I, I don't know if you've watched my other playthroughs, I've played through the Penumbra series, I've played through the Call of Cthulhu. Like, I keep talking about bad puzzle design. And, you know, maybe it's, it's not you know, always obvious what a bad puzzle is and what a good puzzle is, but... You know, here, they're telling you what's going on. And they're using all these visual cues and audio cues to tell you what's going on. And this here, like, that tube drops the cube, and you saw it happen, you saw the cube drop down, so you can associate this symbol with the availability of cube, and then <laughs> the cube hitting you in the head, that's kind of funny. Or they, do they have a... no, they don't have a symbol here. Well, actually, they do, look at that. Cube and an arrow, so you put the cube down on this. So they're actually using these symbols to tell you what to do. And of course, the exit is that way as well, so... Like, GLaDOS is not saying very much. But they're teaching you the basics of the game here. Obviously, this is the very first puzzle of the game, and it's pretty simple. But you see all these clues, all this communication between the game designers and you as the player. And as you walk in, that opens, and this is the... Emancipation field, and all that, right. So we come in elevator closes. So, like it seems really simple, and if you're just playing through the game you might not notice all these little details, but you know, but they're all there. And I, I, I said in the other playthroughs, and I'll say it again here, like, the puzzle shouldn't be about finding the pieces. The puzzle should be about putting the pieces together. Like, finding things, looking for things, is, is, that's not fun. Like, when, it's when you have the pieces together and you're putting things together, that's the fun part. And, you know... Puzzles are about clues. As well, like you're interpreting clues to get to a solution, and, and if you don't have the proper clues, or if you don't have enough clues, then the puzzles are just, they're just weird, or they just don't make sense, and that's not 
fun. Please place the weighted storage cube on the 1500 megawatt aperture science heavy duty super colliding super button. <laughs> so she makes a big deal of the button, which is. Well, you know, this is humor, it's kind of funny. Heavy duty super colliding super button. So, what do we have here? Again, you know, imagine if we're new to the game and she tells you what the objective is. The objective is to put the button or put the cube on the button. Can't get through the glass, but this portal appearing there, there, and there, you know, and these things here. You see how the panel on which the portal appears, it's raised and it's got these things bordering them. And so when you see those, then you associate portals appearing with them. Again, you know, there's a lot of clues and there's a lot of repetition of of, you know, ideas like the portal is here. Like they tell you in many different ways, like they, they tell you the same message in many different ways. So you take the cube, put it on the button. Perfect. Please move quickly to the chamber lock, as the effects of prolonged exposure to the button are not part of this test. Right, and then when you solve the puzzle, then they reward you with a funny line. I don't. I mean, I've played this game like several times already, so the humor is not as funny for me. But you know, prolonged exposure to the button is not part of the test. Like, you know, that, that's kind of funny. So there's the reward as well. Like every time you solve a puzzle, she says something funny, and so. This is a positive reinforcement for you to solve the puzzles. So here, you know, they teach you the idea that portals can move and change. And then you'll need to move through portals and bring objects through portals onto buttons to solve puzzles. So they're again, so it's slightly more complicated than the last puzzle, and they're reinforcing the game mechanics, right? So repetition of ideas and things getting slightly more difficult at each puzzle. And I think consistency is important as well. Like the consistency of the visual language, the consistency of the puzzle designs. Huh, the game pauses a bit on the loading screens. I guess I'll make sure the audio isn't lagged or anything. You're doing very well. Please be advised that a noticeable taste of blood is not part of any test protocol, but is an unintended side effect of the Aperture Science Material Emancipation Grip, which may, in semi-rare cases, emancipate dental fillings, crowns, tooth enamel, and teeth. Actually, I was doing that wrong. I was supposed to come here and look at that. So first you said you're doing very well, again, positive reinforcement. <laughs> I mean, once, once you point it out, it seems a bit... You know, the game is complimenting you, it, it seems a bit strange, right? But you know, it's positive reinforcement. And then she talks about the, the thing, taste of blood and all. Obviously you can't taste blood when you're playing a game, but the point of that was to make you stand here while she talks at you and the door is closed. And what you're meant to do is you're supposed to see that. So that device is creating portals. So the game forces you to stand here for a few seconds. And if you are curious, then you would be watching and seeing how that works. Again, they're, they're presenting the puzzle to you. Imagine that the door is open and she doesn't talk. You know, it's quite easy for you to just walk past and not see what's going on here, right? So if they want to show you something, then they're, they're making sure you see it. And then you walk into here, and you've already seen that. And again, the borders around the places where the portals generally appear. You see the four arrows pointing towards that device. So you see all these all these clues just pointing you towards the solution. It's not like... Very good. You are now in possession of the Aperture Science handheld portal device. 
With it, you can create your own portals. These intradimensional gates have proven to be completely safe. The device, however, has not. Do not touch the operational end of the device. Do not look directly at the operational end of the device. Do not submerge the device in liquid, even partially. Most importantly, under no circumstances should you... So again, you know, there's, there's the storytelling thing about how she's not telling you about the dangers of the portals and all that, so she's you know, not sure if she's your friend or not. Anyway, now we have the portal gun. So, you know, the, the game is... Even though you are solving puzzles, like, if you look carefully, like, the, the game is actually directing you towards the solution. Like, I guess it's still early on in the game, so, you know, the, the difficult stuff's not here yet, but, you know, early on, they keep things fairly easy, and they, they, they put in a lot of clues, a lot of clues, to make sure that you can figure out what the solution is. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna play with this because... I haven't gotten this achievement yet. Actually, I don't think I'll do it. Anyway, there's a there's a Easter egg of sorts here, but uh, I'm not going to explain that. You can look it up on the internet. It's fairly advanced. All right. So, is there anything else to say about this? Oh, I guess that as well. I don't know if you try this yet, but you know you can't. You can place portals on those surfaces, but not that surface. I guess you'll figure it out a little bit later in the game. It becomes more obvious. But anyway, so the first first two levels, they teach you about portals. Third level, they give you the gun. So uh, we'll see what happens next. <laughs> 